Let's take a look at how we might look at this real and reactive power as delivered to some load. And so what we have here is some AC source and then some sort of load. And because we're in an AC system, we represent this load as an impedance. And so this load will have both a real element, which will be R, so these are all of its resistive elements, plus it will have its imaginary sort of reactive elements based upon the capacitors and inductors. So this is going to be the real pieces of this load, and this is going to be the reactive pieces of this load. And for any particular circuit, there's going to be, you know, a voltage across this object and a current flowing through this object. And so what we can say is that the real power is going to be whatever that effective RMS current is times the real pieces of this load. And the real pieces of the load are just going to be the resistive elements. So if you looked at an object and you just simply calculated what its total resistive value was, then that will give you the average or real power. So here is sort of one way of looking at what the average power would be. If you wanted to know the reactive power, the reactive power, again, would be the RMS value. So what is that effective current flowing through it? Times the imaginary values of this load here. And so this would be the RMS current flowing through this object times all of its reactive elements. And so, for example, if you were calculating the impedance of this load and it was 3 plus J4, then what you would have is that this value here would be 3, and this value here would be 4, and IRMS would be whatever the RMS current is flowing through that particular load at that given time. So if you know the profile of a load, like how reactive and how resistive it is, then you can calculate the power, the real power and the inductive power directly if you know the currents.